Welcome back everybody. In today's video, we're checking out these two beautiful tanks behind me. They look amazing. Let's get started. Are you ready? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. I love talking, especially <laughs> on camera. It's the best. Good. <laughs> well, I want to say thanks for the uh, invitation, but I kind of invited myself <laughs> over here. That's all right. Before we get to the things, can I, I I'm just kind of curious about your story of how you got into the aquascaping hobby or the crime hobby, like where did it start? Yeah, um, it started when I was a kid. I always got fascinated whenever we went to a stream or anywhere there was water, I always had to go down and have a look. And then I had a friend at school um, who lived on a, like a small holding and I stayed over at his house a few times and he had a little fish tank in his bedroom yeah. like it was only a little tank with like I don't know like a I think it was a black moor or something at the time like a like a goldfish type thing oh, cool. and uh, and I was just I was fascinated I wanted a fish tank then yeah and, how, how uh, old were you then probably 12 12 13 okay yeah, something like that hmm. I said to my mum and dad that I wanted a tank and we used to go on holiday and we used to get uh, money to go away on holiday yeah. and, uh, and I said to my mum dad I wanted a tank and they said, well, if you want a tank, save some money up and then we'll see when we get back from holiday. So I saved all my holiday money till we got back. And uh, I didn't know at the time, but my mum had, she looked in, they used to have like um, classifieds in, they used to have like a sale paper, like a little, where people bought and sold things. And she, uh, she found these two fish tanks and one day after school, she just said to me, oh, we're gonna go and look at these fish tanks. Yeah. So we did, and it was two, two on a rot, black wrought iron stand with, um, I don't know, they were like these old dimpled silver metal hoods with the lights in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I had them two, two two foot tanks, yeah. yeah. And that was it then. I've never never not had a tank since. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was never a break? No, no. Okay. We've gone through different phases of like the sort of types of fish keeping, like fish keeping. And then yeah. I got a little bit more into... So obviously you buy books mm -hmm. from your fish keeping and then you see like... What first got me into the plants was looking at Dutch aquariums. Yeah. Um, I just love the plants and I always try to grow them just in my tanks at home and never could. Um, so then the older I got, the more I started looking into that and then found obviously um, Nature Aquarium, Takashi Mano, um, but found UK apps. Yeah, um, the, the forum. Yeah, the forum, UK apps, UK plant society. And, and basically I just learned, learned it all from there really and mm -hmm. got into like obviously looking at Takashi Mano's books and I was just like I've got to do got to do this okay so talk talk us through these uh, setups let's start with the, the big one yeah uh, what is this 75p which is 75 centimeters by 45 by 45 uh, 136 liters 136 yeah it's quite an I mean it's a bit of an unusual size yeah, right yeah, yeah you don't see many tanks that size it's, they're either it's 90s or 60s yeah, yeah exactly yeah. I think yeah, ADA did one. They don't do one anymore, and I think UNS have, do one now as well. Mm -hmm. What made you want to go for this side? Because it's unusual, or no? I just, I, I just found found it uh, second hand. Okay. And, um, I wanted a garden stand basically, and this came up on on a forum, and I was like, I've got to have that. Yeah, because this is quite special, right? This stand. Um, I mean, most things are just sitting on a cabinet. Yeah. Yeah, have, these, all the, have all the equipment yeah. hidden. Some people don't like them because you see everything, but yeah, yeah, I really like the I really like the industrial look. Mm -hmm. Would would you consider yourself a bit of an ADA fanboy? Ah, uh, yeah, probably now. Yeah, <laughs> I never used to be, but you know, things change, don't they? And uh, yeah, I like it. It's cool stuff. Cool stuff. Looks really good. So, how long has this one been up and running? I think this has probably been up now nine or ten months. So it's not really old, but it's mature. It's pretty simple, really. All the plants are easy category plants. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's nothing complicated in there. And what are the fish that you have in here? Uh, there's a bit of a mix. Um, again, I got that tank second hand, and when I got that tank sec second hand, it was a, a strip down. And the lady I bought it off, she was a really nice lady, but um, I, I housed all the fish she had in there. So there's a bit of a mix in here now. There's, um, you can't really see them on images most of the time, but there's the... No, I'll, I'll get close-ups. These, these are jelly bean tetras. Um, and then there's a few Takano tetras. Um, 
There's a little group of chili rasboras. There's also a group of ruby tetra. And we've got a betta fish. There's a chocolate garami. And oh, there's some coolie loaches as well, which you can't see at the minute. Hmm. <laughs> coolie loaches. Yeah, coolie loaches. <laughs> I don't know why, but I find the faces like really, really funny. So yeah, I, cool. when when I saw them in the shop, I, I, I like fish. Mm -hmm. That's my problem most of the time. I have I put too many fish in my tanks and too many mixes of fish for yeah. for most people's taste. But yeah, the coolie loaches I thought they'd be just really interesting here because you would they would poke their heads out of these little rocks at the bottom, and it's fun to watch. But yeah, and then there's also a, a cymensis flying fox, mm -hmm. which they're all just being shy at the minute. Unusual time of day for the light to go on, I guess. Yeah. Sorry about that. That's all right. Okay, then let's move on to this one. Yep. This is a classic 60p, right? Yep. Yep. 60, 30, 36. And this one is? 60 litres. Yep. Uh, how long has this one been set up? Uh, three months. Three months. Almost to the day. I mean, they're both good, but... Yeah. I like the... This one is just a little bit more colourful, you know? Yeah, well, when I set them up, I, this one was by itself originally. And... Uh, it was a little bit further that way and, and then the opportunity came to, to get that one um, and I wanted to fit it in but when I did it I wanted it to be completely different to this one mm -hmm. so I wanted a lot more colour in that one and probably a, a little bit more complicated and a bit more challenging to look after I guess obviously the plant trimming and things you've got to do so yeah it's just a totally different scape I'll probably enjoy that one more now yeah I've just enjoyed the, the whole development of it yeah, I mean, you have a lot more like fast going plants also compared to yeah, yeah. that one. Yeah. I guess, I'm guessing th this one kind of looks the same. Yeah, yeah. It's a constant, yeah. It's just basically you, you pinch out a, a ball bitus leaf or a fern leaf or, yeah. a, you know, a, a, once every couple of weeks you might do that. Or, But that one, yeah, is literally trimming all the stems every two weeks. But some of them, like the um, Rotala macandra, you have to trim nearly every week. Yeah. Yeah. Are you are you dosing a lot of fertilizers? Uh, I just use the ADA for it, so it's pretty lean dosing. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just the bright dec bright decay in the the mineral. Yeah, bright decay mineral, so iron and nitrogen. So all of them, but it, oh, yeah. nitrogen as well. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah. it's not like it's not really like lean dosing. No, it, it no, it's not like a lean dosing regime. It's just the I don't think the ADA for it's a particularly potent, mm. and I don't overdose them. I just do. Um, as the bottle. Okay. Yeah, a bit of a mix of fish in here as well. Yeah, some people freak out, but I love them. I love all the fish. Yeah, there's... Um, yeah, but I think, I don't know if you've done that intensely, but the fish that you've chosen are all quite... Um, they're not very, like, crazy active, you know? No, no, no. They're very chill. Yeah. Um, they so all live at different layers as well, so you get fish all over, which is yeah. pretty cool. I like the, there's obviously a, a big group of galaxy rosboras in there, and then green neon tetra for the blue look. Um, and there's some little Fakata rainbow fish and some. Those are these, these guys on top, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are they called? Fakata rainbow fish. Nice. Um, they're all females. There's, there is two males in there, but they're a different type of dwarf rainbow fish. And I forget the, exactly the orange ones. Are. Yeah. Is that the the Pascai? It might be. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Um, there's two males of them, and then there's some honey garami and some black ottos. The honey garami is that a is that a pair? Uh, there's three of them. I don't okay. know yet. Uh, they, none of them are particularly coloured up like a male. Mm. Um, so I'm not 100 percent sure. Yeah, and I like the uh, the black ottos. I've I've recently got a few of them as well. Yeah, they're nice. They're just a little bit different, aren't they? Yeah. Cool. And it seems like these guys actually kind of breed and breed a little bit more easily than right. your regular auto. Yeah. Because I had a small group of them in a 30 centimeter cube and I saw a, oh, like a little baby on, oh, nice. on the glass. Yeah. Cool. Oh, well, fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah. So what, what do you have on top here then? Oh, that is, um, that's my homemade jump guard. Yeah. It's just a basically a shower seal. Um, oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Um, but what I was finding is the little Fakata rainbow fish, on a night, um, they would surf along the glass where the flow is and where the f wh they would shoot up the glass and jump out. Oh, really? So I've just put them on, on these two edges where the flow is, and it, I haven't had a single one jump out since. Huh. 
just stops them because they they literally go where the glass is. And I think it, I think it's when the light goes off. I think it um, it frightens them. Yeah. And I think that's what they do. Yeah, because this light also doesn't have like no, uh, and there's no soft start or soft or soft off. So it's, yeah, yeah, it's. Uh, it looks good. It's very uh, very clean. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's not too disruptive. Yeah. What does maintenance look like on these two tanks? Chaos. Chaos. No, not really. <laughs> I have a I have a roller carpet that I've, I roll out and cut in front of it, um, and then basically it's just every week is glass cleaning, um, probably a seventy percent water change. Seventy. Of, yeah, seventy percent. We have really um, low KH yeah, in the water. Yeah, so. I don't replenish it with any buffers, so big water changes just keeps it topped up. So you said you have a you run a pretty short photo period, right? Yeah, um, this one's only on six and a half hours, and that one's on seven and a half now. That that one has been increased mm -hmm. um, as the stems grew. I think it was obvious that they needed a bit more light, so I, I dropped the light down a bit, so the intensity was a little bit higher, and increased that to seven and a half hours. I'm probably gonna. I don't know, it's working quite well now. I thought about taking up to eight, but I think I'd just have to be trimming all the stems every week. Yeah. <laughs> Which would, you know, I like it, but it would, I don't know. It's working quite well now, so I might just leave it as it is, seven mm -hmm. and a half. And, and usually when you set up a new tank, do you do you start with like a, a very short photo period or do yeah, you I increase always, the intensity? Or? I always start on six hours. Mm -hmm. When I've had past scapes, obviously I've had different lights and you've got... Um, more controllability, so I always used to use like a ramp up and a ramp down. Um, but with these lights, they're just on and off. Yeah. So it's you control it by how long you have your photo period and how high the lights are, obviously. And CO two? Do yeah. you uh, start it like an hour before or two hours? Two before? two hours before. Yeah. Yeah. In both tanks. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Then they go off one hour before the photo period ends. Okay. One thing. Another thing. I was wondering. I remember back in the day you had a quite a large four or five foot tank. Five foot tank, yeah. Five foot tank. Yeah, yeah. What made you change to smaller tanks? I've obviously kept fish um, since I was young and then I got into aquascape in 2012 and then I had a few years of that but then we had two young kids and um, I, I always liked to have a few tanks and it was taking up quite a lot of time so I kind of thought I would change to hardscape only tanks mm -hmm. um, so I switched to a few hardscape only tanks for a while um, and I had a big eight foot discus tank and then we moved house and the house we've moved to now the eight foot tank was too big for the room so I got the five foot tank which was slightly smaller than the eight foot but still quite a big tank um, and I had that set up that got me back into planted tanks I had that set up for probably two years that was running mm -hmm. and then I thought um, I thought I'd try some smaller tanks basically because I wanted to do a few more different aquascapes and when you've got a big tank it's pretty expensive to uh, to swap it around all the time so yeah. I switched it out for a couple of smaller ones mm -hmm. um, and I haven't, I, haven't, I haven't set that one back up again yet but um, I'm sure I will do but yeah it was basically just wanting to try more different scapes um, in probably a slightly more cost effective way. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Thanks for uh, giving us a little insight into your tanks. No problem. No problem. <laughs> <laughs>